guys, another whiteboard discussion. Uh, where today we're talking about the mass airflow sensor when it comes to mass fueling, how it looks in a data log when there's a turbulent mass signal, 90 millimeters versus 120 millimeters. We're gonna give you a general sense of how mass airflow sensors work, how it looks in the tune, and how I know for a fact that your design in uh, mass airflow, cold air, sorry, cold air intakes is shit. So let's just say for instance, the red graph is a bone stock 90 millimeter ish housing from let's say a gen three Mustang. And this bone stock math curve has been, okay, this is a math curve. So. What is a MAF curve? Well, this part of the MAF, mass airflow sensor curve is idle, okay? So if it is smooth and not turbulent, typically each point is an adjustment point at idle. So what you will see if you have turbulent idle, meaning you have, let's say, a cold air intake that does not have a shield around the um, filter and it's an open air element filter well typically what you'll see is you'll see kind of points like that where it's potentially not exactly the most stable and the points of adjustment are there after you adjusted it so that fuel trims are within spec but the problem is that tells me that your cold air let's say this is a, a the end of the cold air, this is the filter. Wow, yeah, okay, that's not bad. And let's say your mass airflow sensor is really close to the filter. Well, the problem is air is coming in through here, here, potentially here, 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 all over the place. And once it enters the mass airflow sensor, the airflow is just doing this crazy stuff before it has a chance of smoothing out and eventually making a straighter uh, airflow pattern so that the mass airflow sensor can have a more consistent sample size of the air coming in. So that's what we tell people most of the time, we don't want your mass airflow sensor really close to the filter or the throttle body because the chance for turbulence is high. So this is a bad MAF curve, okay? This is a terrible MAF curve. It is, this is idle, and if you have turbulent air and I'm hitting it all over in the tune, it's gonna look really bumpy like this because the turbulence hitting the mass airflow sensor is causing me at different frequencies to adjust fueling, it, you know, 10%, 5%, it's just terrible. So typically on swaps, we tell you to make sure that the sensor is pretty far away from the filter and not on a turn. Well, why don't we want it on a turn? I mean, for the same reason, you don't want it really close to the actual filter. If you have a pipe that is going like this into the throttle body, Okay, and this is a throttle body. And this is the filter, whatever. And you have the mass airflow sensor here. Well, this turbulent air is gonna eventually smooth out, but then by the time it takes a turn, it creates turbulence here and here and here before it start, has a chance to straighten out a little more in a straight part of the pipe. Think of it as water the way water flows around a hose. But the problem is it doesn't have a similar density. So what you're gonna see is turbulence coming right into the filter, a chance for it to smooth out. And then if your sensor is in the middle of a turn, the inside part of the airflow is moving in a different velocity than the outside part of that elbow. So typically we tell you, we want to make sure that your mass airflow sensor is in a straight part of the pipe not too close to the filter, not too close to the throttle body. Well, what happens when it's turbulent like that? Well, visualize the MAF curve. It really bumpy at idle if the sensor is really close, but in transition where velocity is the most, has the most variable um, effect, 
you will see that once you're going watt, this is idle, transition, wide open throttle. If you have a very turbulent airflow between idle and watt, the transition will look super bumpy. And even though your fuel trims are right, the car is gonna drive terribly. A stock math curve is super smooth at idle, transition, and then into watt. This black one is a PMAS 120. And the reason I tout PMAS's stuff is they have a flow bench. So PMAS. The PMAS 120 has a similar pattern to stock based on the data they give you. Meaning, they give you a piece of paper with the proper data in order for you to plop it in your tune, just like injector dynamics, FIC, Dietrich 95 injectors, they have data. So if the PMAS data looks really smooth in the tune, drives really well, and the car fuel trims are not all over the place, that's a call that we recommend, plain and simple. Now, a lot of people are, comp are, are confusing mass with velocity. I am not gonna get too scientific. I'm just gonna make it as simple as possible. If there's a 90 millimeter housing and a 120 millimeter housing, there is a big difference in mass. And this is a mass airflow sensor, not a velocity sensor, not a speed sensor, mass. So more mass, more fuel. You understand the numbers in the tune go up for fueling purposes because there is more mass being picked up by the mass airflow sensor as opposed to a stock housing. So what a lot of people do is this. They open up the airflow on a stock cold air and what happens is velocity is increased, but the mass is similar. So the air load calculation is way out of whack. What happens is on Coyotes, typically you have, let's say volumetric efficiency is 100%, meaning 1.0 load, okay? So a, a P mass with the proper mass uh, accounted for in the tune, load calculation will not really be skewed above 1.0 if everything is proper. But what happens if you take a stock housing, you say, let's say you say, this is a no tune required intake, and then you ram air in it. You make a filter that goes off into the fender and shoves air in it. What happens is it disturbs it, 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 the mass, similar housing size. You'll see weird readings like 1.17 air load. That's like a pound of boost on a, on a stock cold air housing. I go, eh, something's jacked up. Why not just open it up a little bit and then get a flow bench, get the proper frequency dialed in, and make sure that your filter location, sensor location, and everything is consistent so that the load calculations aren't really jacked up. Well, people don't do that. PMAS has a flow bench. I know this sounds like a PMAS commercial, but I'm just using an example. They have a flow bench. They can test the airflow at different frequencies, idle, transition, and watt. And they can dial in the points that they need to dial in and provide you data. But a lot of people think this is like a velocity sensor more than anything. It is a mass sensor, density. So a lot of people kind of get in, into the weeds on that. But a lot of cold air manufacturers, they don't care. Most cold air manufacturers, what they have is a very pretty, nice looking cold air under the hood. And you buy it. And then I go, the math curve looks like this. So if a math curve looks bumpy, crappy at idle, and then at watt, I have to hit it at different points, that car is gonna drive like absolute butt cheeks. It's gonna be really nasty driving. Stock, the red line, smooth. You ever get in a stock Mustang? Thing drives smooth, nice. Why? Because Ford spent millions of dollars developing a cold air system in order for your car to fuel properly. P 
PMAS has a flow bench and spends similar amount of time, or, or any cold manufacturer that has a flow bench and spends a similar amount of time vetting the cold air intake is gonna be one I recommend. So when you ask me, Alex, what's the best cold air intake out there? I'm gonna say, well, PMAS Fenderwell NA, uh, PMAS CJ, PMAS for, I mean, the one that has a flow bench. What about this one? It's okay. Like air raids are okay. Um, Roush, Roush uh, with insert, without insert, they're okay. Um, even a stock housing where the shield is properly sealed and not getting a ram air effect. I'm sorry, where the filter is properly shielded, not getting engine bay heat and proper um, air that is not ramming air into the filter, I think is a great um, design. But typically someone that has a flow bench can see the data in idle, transition, and watt and build a cold air based around the data. So just because you shove a Home Depot pipe filter at the end of it, shove a mass sensor in it, and think uh, you're a king dingling, um, cool. If you sell a bunch of them, awesome. But I'd rather go with somebody that has a flow bench and gives me proper data so that I can tune it properly. Thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you later.